Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing the Tudor Heritage Black Bay S&G. Now this particular model with a sensational sunburst golden dial is part of the S&G steel and gold family that launched at Basel World 2017. It's an imposing 41 millimeters on the wrist, easy enough to wear on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. Nevertheless, it does have an outsized presence uh, that is decidedly more modern and strident than the vintage references to which this watch's many styling cues refer. And that's a good thing, because it's neither oversized nor undersized, but it's contemporary. Fairly thick, but not terribly so at 14.8 millimeters. Because it does have a little bit of a slope to its bezel, you should have no trouble fitting this one underneath a jacket cuff, although dress shirts might get hung up. You can see in profile, the watch is 50.1 millimeters lug to lug, which means it's excellent for wrists as small as 14 centimeters circumference. The spacing between the lugs is 20 22 millimeters, so this one has a broad footing. And the timepiece does have a very solid bracelet. I don't know what you've heard about the SNG, but it's worth mentioning that the links at center on the bracelet are actually a rolled gold. So let's talk about the gold on this watch. You have the bezel itself, which is solid yellow gold. You have the crown, which is gold wrapped. And then you have a rolled or wrapped set of center links on the bracelet. And you can see that they're all of a satin finish, which I actually happen to prefer to high polish. It seems a bit more refined and contemporary. As you can see, this is a simulated rivet style bracelet with polished outer faces, satin finished steel shoulders. It refers to the rivet bracelets of the 1960s and late 1950s at Tudor and Rolex when they shared bracelets. They used the same Rolex bracelets during that period. And you can see that the clasp itself, a bit more contemporary as it features a robust clasp body, three different anchoring points for the base of the bracelet, spring-loaded ceramic pin snaps for long-wearing durability to maintain the tight tolerances over time. Though it looks like a rivet bracelet, it does have sizing screws, so you can find that perfect size the easy way with a jeweler's tool. No need to buy esoteric tooling to size this watch. You will note that the case features a contrast in finish. It's polished on its flanks, and then it has a satin finish on the hoods of its lugs. I'll get a little bit closer to show this to good effect. But there is a transitional polished bevel between the two that refers to the hand-finished beveled flanks of Rolex cases from this period. And remember, up until the late 1980s, Rolex and Tudor actually shared cases. So they would have had the same polished bevels from the same artisans. Now, the timepiece does feature a solid gold bezel. And it's important to note that the bezel that you get is a anodized aluminum insert. This is not a ceramic bezel, so I want to be clear about the materials. It has a wonderful golden calibration and numeral set that nicely matches the tone of the bracelet as well as the dial. And the detent is superb. It's crisp, it's loud, you can feel it, you can hear it. So you line up that luminescent index. Let's give ourselves a bit more light. Line up that luminescent index with the minute hand, and now you have an impromptu 0 to 60 minute timer. Now the timepiece does have a rather glam dial. It is a true sunburst gold, and it absolutely pops. All applique indices with superluminova. You can see the watch refers to both the 1950s and 60s Tudor Submariners, as well as the late 60s to mid 70s Snowflake subs with the Snowflake style hour and second hand. There is a date on this one. It's considered to be an upscale Black Bay model, so it has the date as an added feature. It's convenient, and you will note Tudor, unlike Rolex, eschews the Cyclops eye, so you have a more balanced dial, much like an older Sea Dweller. Of course, it features a chapter ring style seconds and minutes track, and it is a COSC certified Swiss chronometer. Uh, two different Tudor logos. There's the old school pre-1969 rose on the crown, and then on the dial, the post-1969 late 68 Tudor shield. Underneath the case back, Tudor manufacturer caliber, 5612, as promised, 26 joules, automatic winding, 70 hour power reserve, 28,800 preparation per hour beat rate, free sprung balance with a full balance bridge for shock resistance, silicon hairspring for anti-magnetism, stop seconds or hacking, and a quick set date, all of it water resistant thanks to the screw down crown to 200 meters. So this is a full service sports watch. Now I should make a clear distinction between wrapped gold and plated. This is nothing like plated gold. You will never wear 
wear through this. Short of wiping out on your Ducati, there's no way you're ever going to get down to the metal core. So for practical and aesthetic and durability purposes, this is effectively a gold link. So think of it as such. This is a timepiece that's definitely more Miami than New York. And I'm a resident of New York with time spent in Miami, so I can speak with some experience of both. This timepiece would absolutely rock the neon deco strip at night. See it and rock where you are on the watch box. Tudor Black Bay s &G. Not vintage and no compromise by night. Blazing Super Luminova. 